Last week, uh, I took you through uh, a, a, a confession for uh, the, the Lord of hosts. Okay, Pam, uh, I talked to Pam this week. She let us know last Sunday... Uh, and through the week that she was having surgery, she had a, I think she said a broken tooth, and it was a, it, it was a mess, and she wanted to have a post put in for a future, she said, crown, so I guess they'll build a tooth, and uh, she was very concerned about it, and she called a number of intercessors, friends who are intercessors, and uh, she said, and that confession that we said last week, she asked me at the end of the service, she said, do you have that written down in words? I said, sure, it's on the front row. Just take the copy of that paper that I read from. And she said uh, that uh, prior to the surgery, she called for, summons the angels of heaven to help her and to uh, uh, go host. That's a go host, make toast of the enemy. So she said, she said that a couple of times, twice. Uh, and her, her results were just fabulous. I think they were beyond all expectation. They were concerned that they could not maybe put a post in because her jaw bone was not uh, the bone that the teeth were going to go in. It was not strong enough, and she'd have to have a bone graft, and it would be a long, drawn-out process. And so she prayed that, and she called for the Lord of hosts to, to help her and uh, took up her right and responsibility to summons them to her aid and uh, she told them for them to go make toast of the enemy. She had absolutely a wonderful report. Barbara Meyer, last week, if you were here, gave a testimony of a surgery she had two years ago that resulted in phenomenal, I think she said three months, 12 weeks, three months of pain. And it was supposed to terminate the pain fairly quickly. Not immediately, not overnight, not the next day or next or maybe even a week, but within two weeks, it should be greatly reduced. It lasted intensely for 12 weeks. She had it again a couple of weeks ago. She testified last week, and she went through and asked God. Uh, she summoned the angels to tear down the stronghold of the enemy and the platform that they had been established on, causing ha havoc and pain in her back, and she stood against it, and <clears throat> She testified that within, I don't know, five, six hours of the surgery, six punctures they made in her back uh, with, uh, with the procedure that they would um, burn the, the nerves. Uh, same thing they did two years ago that she suffered 12 weeks, and she suffered about five hours this time. And she testified, and I ask her almost every day, how you doing? Is your back doing good? Yeah, she says, it's just doing wonderful. So I want to go through this again for your own benefit, for our benefit. And um, we are, we, uh, have, I found that there's some 270 some, I think 272 verses in the Bible where God is revealed. He reveals himself as the Lord of hosts. If you have a newer translation, it might say the Lord of angel armies. And so we uh, have become acquainted with uh, a... A, 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 a bit of guidance from Kat Kerr over uh, summonsing the angel army on your behalf uh, that's been released, and I think, in a particular way during this time period. So it'll be on the board or should, should be on the wall up there. And if you'll say this, read this with me, please. I choose with my will to be like Christ. I invite heaven's army sent by the Lord of hosts to be one of my mighty weapons, to pull down strongholds, to slash the platforms the demonic have been ruling from, to bash the demonic, to throw them in a dry place, because we're creating regions of light. So, Father, I choose as an act of my will to take power over the power of the enemy, who is attacking me and my family, and I summons the host of heaven, you go now as my mighty weapon to pull down the stronghold of the enemy, to crush their plan, to open up doors, to reveal the things of God, to let God be alive in me. Go, host, make toast of the enemy. Amen.
So look at one another and say, that's right. That's right. You can be seated. So two suggestions. What, 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 what can you do? How can you take? How can you? Um, it'll be posted. I'll post this, post this, and I'll include this section as a part of the message. And so here's a suggestion. You could rephrase in your own life something you're dealing with. You could say, I summons heaven's army to go and bring destruction to the plans of the enemy against me and my family. Very valid. We know that uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, there's a lot God said about the angels, and they are sent to be of service to those who are heirs of salvation. It's completely biblical to call upon a resource that God has announced. I have created them for this purpose. They are for your purpose. Utilize them. Here's another, a second example. It could be, it could be this way. Uh, uh, so read this with me, everybody. I summons heaven's army to pull down strongholds, hindering me or getting into my way. Now, th this is practical. Last Sunday, it was, uh, I intended to bring the backside of that message. I don't think I'll get to it. I may. Out on the sign, it says March 6, 2017. How many of you noticed it? it, it okay. What is that, you may ask? I felt twice prompted uh, to put that sign up, and I thought, oh my, this thing should say March the 6th, 2021. Okay, what does it have to do with? Good question. On September the 23rd, 2017, I had 2017 on my mind, there was an event uh, that was noticed all over the world, uh, the internet was filled, YouTube was filled with all kinds of people talking about the constellations that came together, and there were many that said it was, that was the Revelation chapter 12, where there was the woman with, who had a crown, who had a child, there was this dragon who appeared to uh, gobble up, in the constellation, gobble up the child, and with its tail sweep, and about a third of the stars of heaven, it, 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 it's, it, it swept them, and that was Revelation chapter 12, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. And there were many people, I was not among them, that felt the woman was, in essence, taken away and she was taken up to God the Father for protection. That's how the um, uh, constellation is interpreted. So I'm talking about things that are taking... The, uh, and this date, September 23rd, 2017, is when the constellation appeared directly over Jerusalem you know, way high up in the sky, directly over Jerusalem, once every so many thousand years, supposedly, that phenomena would take place. There were many. Uh, I, 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 one in my family was so convinced that the Lord was going to, the rapture was going to take place, that they uh, took the day off and spent the day sitting on their front porch because they were assuming Jesus was coming. He was going to take the church, and so they weren't going to be hard to find, and they weren't going to have to... I guess, travel through the roof of the house. They were there on the front porch just waiting for the rapture to occur. Fortunately, after, a, you know, a few hours or many hours or most of the day, they decided, I don't think it's going to happen today. Um, interestingly, in verse 3 of that chapter, um, it gives a number of days. Uh, the, the constellation... It was actually, it was over Jerusalem. It was on September 23rd. It was 2017. It was Rosh Hashanah, uh, a, a, a significant Jewish feast day. And uh, they're always important. And there's a, there's a date or a number of days that is given. And the number of days is 1,260 days. I'm not the one who discovered this or did the original work. Uh, I heard it, oh, several months ago. And um, that if you count 1,260 days from September the 3rd, 2017, you come to March the 6th this week. March the 6th, 2021. And they said, which I agree with, they had no idea what was going to happen on March the 6th, but it was going to be epic, whatever it was. So you're, you're, you're attending a church, 
and you have a pastor who has uh, exposed himself uh, to, to some of this, and there's a major event, very probable. What is the major event? I don't know. But it's very probable that major event is going to take place, get started in such a clear fashion that everybody will know something has begun on March the 6th. And if I didn't tell you about it, then I think you would have every right. Why didn't, if you, if you had inkling, why didn't you say something? Because it could have been, uh, it could have helped settle my heart. If it's significant and it's difficult, it could have given me, I put it there for clickbait. Clickbait. That's what someone has called it to me. I don't know if it's the right term or not. It's the term Faye and I use. Uh, and if you are the one who devised the term clickbait and the whole internet world uses it because you divide, we apologize to you. We didn't know that term existed. But that's what Faye and I use. So when you get on the internet and they have these pictures and then this title uh, and they're trying to influence you to click on that uh, and because of the picture and maybe it's a video and maybe it's the other, that's just what Faye and I call, we call them clickbait. I put that out there for clickbait. Because I'm counting that something significant is going to happen. I'm going to say it again so it's not misinterpreted. Okay, Pastor Russ, what exactly is going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. But I do believe it's going to be very significant. Do you have any possibilities? Yes. So I'm hoping the week after this, the next week, the next weeks, that people going by, you, I'm, I'm settling it for you now, people going by, I'm hoping they call the church up. Why did you put that date on there? And how did you know that was going to take place on that date? Um, I had no idea what was going to take place. But that date is a very interesting date. Let me take you to the Bible. Now, if, March the 6th, if, Saturday, Saturday of this week, March the 6th, it is 1,260 days from the day back in the 23rd of September in 2017 were the constellations, and I mean, it was all over. I'm sure you heard reference to somewhere, somehow, that constellation and all the kinds of things that people thought three years ago, that this is what, four years ago, that this is what was going to happen. And it didn't, but it is interesting that I think a clock got set in motion. What was the clock? It was a clock that had 1,260 notches. And when is that clock going to go all the way around and hit all those notches and come to the last few this week? Now let's say, I, I, I wish I could really experience a real miracle. Let's say that you, I mean something profound. Here's your chance. If something happens on Saturday, that means there was a man, the Apostle John, sitting in a cave on an island 2,000 years ago. And he was sitting writing a book of Revelation. And he was writing about what's going to happen in the future. And you can say, what are the chances that he's going to write about, in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, he's going to write about, in the sky, there's going to be constellations, and they're going to come together. They only happen every several thousand years in that particular alignment of constellations. But it's going to take place, and then, then you're going to add to it 1,260 days. Now, what was he doing? Was he in that cave, uh, John, the Apostle John? And so there he was. Was he rolling dice? What was he doing? How did he come up with 1,260 days? 
if on Saturday, March the 6th, there is something globally. And I think the scripture gives a hint. What are the chances that that's circumstantial? That that ju well, just happened. He had a lucky guess. That's what it is. It's a lucky guess. And did he guess that that alignment of constellations, which already happened three plus years ago, that it was going to take place, uh, did he know it was going to take place on a high holy day, uh, one of the Jewish feast days of Rosh Hashanah? Did he know that? How did he know to put in there the number 1260 days? Because if you count 1260 days, you come to March 6, uh, 2021. We happen to be alive. Uh, well, uh, you got to make it till Saturday, you know. You have a good chance of being alive uh, March 6, 2021. I mean, you're real close. I think it is so healthy for human beings to look at Scripture, to see the events of God, and to look at them and just ho-hum, that's interesting. Boy, that's cool. Okay, what's the next verse? What's the next revelation that can come? What's the next incident uh, I can have? It, 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 it is not ho-hum. They can rewire you. You begin to think of God differently. You see that he is big enough, my goodness, that he knows in advance. How did the apostle John, who wrote Revelation, the book of Revelation, how in the world did he know that? It was revealed to him. Who revealed it? He was born again, could have been the indwelling Holy Spirit. Could have been an angel. There was an angel who he spoke of many times, who was with him showing him things. Could have been the angel said it. Could have been Jesus visited him. There's so many possibilities. But it came from God. It came from the kingdom of God. And you're going to have the chance. So I, as a pastor who, who uh, am mesmerized by uh, uh, the, the timing of God, the working of God, these kinds of things, uh, the, 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 the foreknowledge of God, the, the, they are just so fascinating to me. You benefit from that. You suffer from it. You benefit from it. You suffer from it. I understand. What are some of the possibilities? So, uh, it could be. It could be the second coming. I don't believe that. I didn't even put the word rapture in there because there's no way it's going to be the rapture. But if I'm wrong, I'll yell to you on the way up. I was wrong. Okay. Okay. Could be the second coming. It could be the final harvest begins. That's possible. Uh, probable? I, I, you could almost say, for me, it's one of those that's, that's a real possibility. Have I said the final harvest? In some dimensions, it's already begun. When did it begin? It began, um, I, I believe, back in 1980. And you could say it was a little bit before that. It began when God began to reveal it to Bob Jones in late 78, 70, 77, 78, 79. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's... Yeah. Well, in, in some of the prophecies that we see back in the 70s, you ought to look at the prophecies that are in uh, the end time harvest section of our website. And you can see, well, yeah, he was talking to people about it back then. It was like, it's always been in the mind and heart of God before the world was even brought into being. But it could be what we would talk about in earth terms could be the real beginning. It could be St. Seraphim's resurrection from the dead. He said that that's what was going to launch the great harvest in Russia and going to launch all of that in Russia. Could be. I've tried to identify the date of his resurrection before and I was really wrong. So I said, did you hear me? Could be, Faye, did you hear me say it could be? Okay, good, it could be. It could be President Trump that it's going to be safe. It, it, it could be. That's when he is, uh, he's inaugurated, he's recognized as, uh, as president, and he's inaugurated. It could be. 
could be. It could be, um, but I think the scripture gives a hint. Uh, it could be the kingdom age begins. Or it could be, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. If you, if you take the scripture and you say, maybe there's a hint in the scripture. What is going to take place after that 1260 days? So if you'll turn in your Bibles, if you have them, or your phone Bibles, if you have a phone Bible to Revelation chapter 12, I think scripture gives a hint. Um... So we're in the book of Revelation, last book in the Bible, and we're going to be in chapter 12. This was 2,000 years ago this was written. And a key element of that, of this, could actually take place this week because we're 1,260 days. So here we go. Now, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon upon her feet, and on her head, uh, on her head, a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in pain, and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great, fiery red dragon, having seven horns, uh, heads, and ten horns, and seven uh, diadems on his head, and his tail. Uh, drew a third of the stars of heaven and, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. This is constellation. Study astronomy and hear about the constellations and what they seem to look like and names that have been given to them. And, and if, if you're a student of that, you'll recognize that. And if you're a real student of that, you would recognize uh, that happened actually back in our lifetime, happened in September the 23rd, 2017, over Jerusalem. And that happened to be the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, very interesting. Who was ready to give birth uh, to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she bore a male child who will rule all nations with a rod of iron. So some could interpret this. Well, she's given birth to a male child who is going to rule all nations Maybe just that much of it is just that part is you can interpret at this particular point in time with a rod of iron. Maybe that's coming a little later. One of the things you have to understand is that when you try and interpret Scripture and prophecies in Scripture, sometimes you just have to take two or three words because the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh word is referring actually to another time in history. And then it, then it may go back in the eighth, ninth, and tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Would God do that? He absolutely has done that. This is a possibility. And so it could be referring to Donald Trump. Do I think it is? I'm probably less than more, but could be. Uh, who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God. And so that three years ago, three and a half years ago, the child was caught up to God those who were uh, proclaiming and believing in and having their hope in. And this is one of the things that I want to do for you. If your hope is uh, the rapture is going to come and I'm going to be taken out of here, then you will not be looking. Okay, what resources has the kingdom of God given to me to stand in this time that we find ourselves standing in? If you have in your mind, leaving, 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 I'm out of here, I'm out of here, it's, I'm gone, I don't even have to deal with this. Then as you start dealing, you'll get angry, you'll get mad at God, you'll get mad at your teachers, you'll get mad. I'm trying to save you from that. I believe at this point in time, we should be investing. What weapons is God revealing that we will need to fulfill His purposes in this particular time in history? To that end. And her child was caught up to God. And so there were those three years ago was saying, it's going to come, we're going to get caught up, the rapture, we're gone, we're out of here. Okay, as best to my none, none of us made it if it was the rapture. So we all need to repent and ask Jesus into our hearts. Do you understand? Because we didn't make it. 
But it's another possibility it didn't happen. I'm going with that one. Then the woman fled into the wilderness uh, where she w w ha has a place prepared by God that they should uh, feed her there. 1,260 days. So a number of days has been given. Those, that number, if you start counting then, that number com is completed on Saturday. Huh. And we are alive. Is there a hint? Well, if you keep reading, maybe there's a hint. So keep reading. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Some may say, oh, that's talking about before time when Lucifer was cast out of heaven. I don't think so. It would have had to have been then that what God did is he was revealing what was going to take place, which we think happened in 2017. He was going to go back to the time period way before that, way before time that we know it, when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, and this is how it actually happened. Another approach, that's one approach. Another approach is, no, this is sequential, and so after that 1,260 days, maybe nothing's going to be like the way it was, because there's going to be fundamental changes. What might those changes be? They might be that the whole hierarchy of the demonic kingdom is tossed out of the second heaven, and they are establishing on earth. And maybe that's of great benefit because they don't have those high, if that is, they don't have those high and lofty in the air positions, but it's more hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's down on the earth. It is interesting that this passage begins in the heavens, in the stars, where the constellations are, and it's like it's all in the heavens. Then it comes to the earth. This is the hint that maybe what's going to take place on March the 6th is going to mean, oh my goodness, we are really... We're really standing on the rim. And war broke out in heaven. Michael, uh, he's an archangel, and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, and they did not prevail, uh, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Well, they don't, they're, they're, they're not with up in the third heaven where God is. So it could be it's talking about the, seventh, the second heaven, the heaven, the invisible heaven that's above us, that there's going to be a huge disruption of forces of wickedness, and they're going to have to change. That serpent of old called the devil, or Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, Now is salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ uh, has come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them night and day before God, has, has been cast down, and they overcame him, we may be entering into the time period when the overcoming, because it's possible it's going to be down, the, the location has changed, and they overcame him by the word of their mouth, their confession, and the blood of the lamb. It may be that we are entering into a time period of increased fighting against the forces of wickedness, and God's giving us a heads up that the battle is intensifying, but he's intensifying and revealing new weapons that are being made available. The realization of them are being made available to the body of Christ, to people. Among what might some be? The place of angel armies that have been given to us, that we have, they were given to be of service to those who are heirs of salvation. Maybe we can summon them if they've been given to be of service to us. Maybe we can summon them and call them to our aid for the things that we need aid for. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. Therefore, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and, and the seal for the devil uh, has come down, uh, was uh, w w having great wrath. He could really be angry because he knew that he has a short time. So it's of advantage to know if you're really, if the war, if it's going to intensify, it's to your advantage. If you're living in the realm, I'm, I'm going to be out of here any moment. I'm going to be raptured. I'm going to be gone. And I, I'm not going to have to deal with that because God wouldn't let me deal with that. He just wouldn't. And I'm out of here. That could so injure you. Whereas if you thought, it's really going to get hot. There's going to be a lot of firing going on. There's going to be all kinds of things. And, um, and I've been privileged to be given the opportunity to be here. I better use all the weapons, the resources that God has given. The hint from Scripture is that spiritual warfare is going to go mega when those 1260 days are done. It's a good time to know how to summon angel armies to your help. It's a good time to be established in the blood of Jesus. It's a good time to know and be taught that Christianity is the great confession. We confess who we are in Christ. What has been done for us by Christ. What we're resting on in Christ. How did John know these things? Sitting in a cave on the Isle of Patmos. Talking about what was going to happen in 2017 and 2021. Those were such appropriate songs that we sang. Declarations, praising God. They were so appropriate. So at the end of the day, Pastor Russ, what do you think is going to happen on March the 6th? I think... Spiritual warfare is going to increase at a minimum. And I think Scripture has warned us about this. And it's a chance. See, God... I don't know what to do. God permitted you to be born and alive at this time in history. If the scripture is true, which says that he will not let you be tempted above what you're able, then he knew each one of you could make it in this time period. And the intricacies and difficulties of this time period in history. He permitted you to be alive, born so that you would be here at this time period. He knew that you could make it. Not by yourself, not in our own efforts and energy, but in Him. He knew the resources that would be available to you. You could make it. 